Welcome to Double Fries No Slaw. It is Sunday, April 3rd. I've been on vacation all weekend. It's been fantastic. I finally drug myself away from the pool so that we could do this episode. TJ Pittenger, Richie Barnes, and a special guest with much better lighting this week, uh, Dane Draper. Guys, how you doing? Good. Good, TJ, man. I, I, I got to say, I love Cabana Bay. I think that's a that's a great resort there at Universal. Um, it looked like a good time for sure. And, uh, you know, I've had a productive morning, been to Lowe's, been to Publix, and ready to knock out this uh, post-scrimmage podcast. Oof, look at you running all your errands. I know. I haven't done anything because we've been gone all weekend. <laughs> like, usually I'd already have, like, a load of laundry done for the week. I know that's really washed and not why anyone's tuned in to listen to us <laughs> talk about laundry and errands. But... Here we are. Um, Household but, chores uh, podcast. <laughs> yeah. Did you? Uh, okay, we'll get going here in a minute. But did you guys? As some people get in here, do us a favor if you're watching this. We don't ask for this often, but if you're watching this, just hit the retweet button. Just hit share. We ask for it every day on the spaces. I don't know why we don't ask for it in here. But if you're watching this, hit the retweet button. Hit the share button. Unless you're, if you're hate listening or hate watching, I won't make you retweet it or reshare it. You can just keep watching and hate listening. But if you're listening to this, if you're watching it, hit the share button. We'd appreciate it. We'll move on. Richie, did you, was it, I know it was past your bedtime, but did you stay up for the game last night? I did. I, Duke and Carolina have never played in the tournament before. I was not going to miss that in the Final Four. And it turned out exactly as I hoped it would. A very good game. Oof, Villanova, Kansas, not good at all. But Duke, Carolina delivered. And I'm very happy Coach K goes off into retirement with a loss to his most hated rival. And I know, I think we have different opinions on coach K. I'm happy that that's how his career ended. We have different opinions on K coach K. Like you didn't, you like, what's your opinion on coach K? You don't like him? Just never liked the guy. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think, I mean, I like him a lot. I don't like <laughs> yeah. Duke at all, but I like coach K. It seemed like a classy individual. Um, never really involved with scandal at all. Consistent. That he got caught. Oh, I mean, come on. Never really involved with scandal. <laughs> I just Always don't like consistent. the whole yelling at oh. student reporters, yelling at the student section, showing them don't highlights bother. of the previous don't, student don't, sections. Nah, doesn't like, bother that's me. That's how you're don't, supposed to act. Like, yeah, that's here. right. He, uh, let's he get into some football. He, he runs the place. No problem with that at all. Um, also, yeah, you're right. This hat is amazing. We're going to shout out Garnet and Gold here in just a minute, but they have some yeah. that are very similar that you can go. That's why I put this uh, pick up here. Um, they have some that are very similar at guardinggold.com that you can get for 20% off. You can get them under $20 with code no slaw N O S L A W. This is my favorite FSU hat. So you're spot on. Like, I love this hat. Um, I looked for it for like three years. And when I found it, I bought three of them because I knew I didn't <laughs> end up losing them. Love so I'm it. down to one. I have one left. Um, but yeah, game last night was great. Dane, I know that's past your bedtime too. Did you stay up watching it? Uh, I did, man. Yeah. I mean, I'm a younger guy, but I feel like that was one of those games where, you know, you're kind of watching like history. So yeah, that was pretty cool. But yeah, I think I figured this whole lighting thing out. So <laughs> you look great. You look great. Happy late birthday. Turned 21. Not Thank too you. long ago. So mm -hmm. Well, let's get into it. Double Fries, No Slaw, brought to you by Guthrie's in Tallahassee. You can visit both their locations at 1818 West Tennessee and 2550 North Monroe. We are doing a tailgate with Guthrie's this weekend at the spring game. You can check my Twitter. You can check a lot of different places for this. I've got the information posted. But if you go to patreon.com slash rolluppnetwork, you can sign up. And as a Patreon, you get into the tailgate for free. If you don't sign up as a Patreon, tickets are $50 for all you can eat and all you can drink. So save yourself a lot of money. Sign up as a Patreon. I mean, for nothing else, I mean, you can literally just quit next month and still have gotten in this month. We don't want you to do that, but I mean, save yourself a bunch of money. Sign up as a Patreon, patreon.com slash roll underscore. No, no, patreon.com slash roll up network to get into our tailgate this weekend if you roll up to the tailgate and you're not subscribed i'm going to make you do it before you come in so everybody's welcome we do have space this is limited though so come hang out with us on saturday guthrie's will be there supplying the food all you can eat all you can drink graham co will be there we've done a lot with them on the spaces and we're excited for the tailgate this weekend if you have any questions shoot me a dm shoot the podcast a dm and i'm happy to try and answer if any of that's confusing or if you're having any trouble at all but we had a great time for the Notre Dame game. Richie Harlan, you guys were there. Um, and we're going to have another good time this weekend on Saturday before 
the spring game. Uh, let's get into it. We brought J Dane on to get a real quick recruiting update, and then we're going to talk about a scrimmage that happened this weekend. But, Dane, let's start with some recruiting. You were on campus quite a bit uh, yesterday, correct, and yeah. got to speak with some different guys. We have some articles that will be posted this afternoon. Again, I just got back from vacation, so hopefully everybody else has just kind of been on vacation mode like I have. But just give me the overall vibe, the overall feel of the weekend. This, you, There's been recruiting visits every single weekend since what? Beginning of March, right? So like last four weeks or so. Yeah, um, March. Because February was a dead period and then all of January too. Yeah, and then we've gotten – uh, you know, another big weekend coming up. But what was the vibe this weekend? How many – do you have like a average number of prospects that were there? Thoughts on the uh, the visits this weekend just overall? There was always a, a good number of guys coming in just from like with tours or anything like that, you know, the coming groups. But there was some significant prospects on campus too. Um, I'd say like the top three guys probably, guys that – are on our board for this year. Um, there's plenty of 24 and 25 and 23 guys, but um, I think highlighting the whole day was Zachariah Owens. He's a yeah. top 100 uh, offensive lineman um, from Georgia. He's actually originally from – he's from Georgia. Then he lived in Broward County for a while, and now he's in Georgia again. But, um, yeah, he said a lot of good things about us. Definitely check out that, that article. Um, but that's pretty good. He said – not many guys do this, but he said um, – he, like, revealed kind of exactly his order of schools. Um, yeah. He said we're up in second for him now behind Clemson and in front of Alabama. So that's pretty interesting. But said lots of good stuff about Atkins and Norvell and those relationships that he's building with them. And then So, so yeah. on him, behind Clemson ahead of Alabama, does he have a timeline for committing? Did he talk to no. you about that? Not to give away the whole – yeah, article. he's he said he doesn't have a timeline for it right now. Um, so if something if Clemson slips up, you're telling me that Mike Stuff and Nick in a locker on that one. Maybe <laughs> you know, right now. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, also on campus, you did we did have an article come out on him on was it Thursday? We uh, yeah, that's uh, Connor Stroh. That was a Texas yeah, yeah. guy. That's another one who was on campus though. Both massive human beings, like six six, three hundred fifty pound guys, just. Huge people, so you can mix them up easily. What did what did Connor have to say about the uh, about the uh, visit? Good things too. Um, we'll have a story up on that too. But uh, good things. Uh, he's from Texas. This is his first time being at Florida State. He they got to see the scrimmage. That's a big deal with with Saturday. Um, but yeah, good things you can see from that story. Cool. And then the uh, the last big one that we talked about off air, and we'll talk about on here real quick, is Sean Russ, um, out of Florida. Correct. Talk to yeah. us about uh, about Sean Russ and the overall impact that. Uh, obviously, we'll have a story coming there too, but just the overall impact that you were kind of given from his visit as well. Yeah, he's a guy from Fort Myers. Uh, he, I think, he knows Amarion Cooper. He said he focused on him a lot in the scrimmage. But uh, he's been up here a number of times. He's like a fringe four-star recruit guy. He's a corner, lengthy corner. He's, I think he's about 6'2". Um, yeah, he's been up here a few times. He's he's known Kiwan Ratcliffe since he was at Florida. He's a former Florida commit. Um, so he's known Kiwan Ratcliffe for a while. He's known Marcus Woodson since his high school freshman season um, when Woodson was still at Auburn. So there's uh, some background with him for sure. But um yeah, he said some good stuff about Florida State. I think he'll be back up here, maybe not for the spring game, but in a few weeks, probably in the month of April. Um, Florida State got a commitment. Um, yeah. It was on Friday? Well, yeah, it was on Friday while I was heading over to um, Orlando. I don't know if you were on the spaces, but Seymour, uh, Seymour over there on the spaces was giving Mr. Norvell a hard time. And then, <laughs> of course, like an hour later, uh, Mike Norvell gets a commitment. Talk to us about the commit on Friday. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, he, uh, I think he might have – I think he was supposed to commit Saturday on the visit because he did visit on Saturday. <laughs> but he's just um, a little excited. He pulled the trigger a little bit early. He had to, you know. Um, I didn't get to talk to him on Saturday, but i uh, been talking to him through text. Should be able to get some quotes from him at some point. Uh, but, yeah, he's a – He's a promising prospect. He's a guy that's, I think, a little bit undervalued right now. That's not 
that's not a uh, too biased opinion, I don't think. <laughs> but he's, I think, about 6'2", and he looks all of it, and he's he's got wheels. Um, he's a raw prospect, as I guess high schoolers usually are, but he, he dominates in the seven-on-seven seven camp, and he dominates on the field. So those are two things you look for. He's a really physical player, and he's also great in the seven-on-seven seven circuit. So great stuff. Big fan of his nickname, Darren Lawrence out of Sanford, Florida, Goldie. Do you have any thoughts? What, did you have a nickname in high school when you were playing or no? I, I did not. <laughs> by Dane. <laughs> you just went by Dane. Yeah. Um, this weekend, how big of a visit weekend will we have uh, for the spring game coming up? Pretty big. Um, I don't have a list put together right now for uh, for the visitors for that, but it should be a big weekend for sure. I mean, maybe a you know 40 to 60 guy weekend. Something like that could be. Cool. Yeah. Um, and then what do you – just kind of what's your – I mean, you you were around last year too, really high highs in um, in the spring and then in the summer and then even, you know, hold on for dear life in the fall when, when the season didn't start so well. Um, are you noticing anything different this year about recruiting as opposed to last year? I know fans are – you know, like, oh, kind of jaded or scarred from what happened last year on early signing day with obviously the big miss, but then even some smaller misses that, you know, weren't the best too. Are you noticing anything different or is it just kind of same old, same old? Mike Norvell and staff just kind of like working their butts off and going or is there something a little bit different this year? Well, they're definitely working hard, yeah. But, um, I mean, this is my first full year. So I haven't – last year when I started trying to do all this, it was more in like April and May when I really kind of – started showing up on I guess I showed up on campus for the first time in June so I haven't seen all this in person from this this point in the year yet but um I mean they're definitely working and they're getting talent on campus um and that's all you can really ask for especially after a five win season um but the guys we're talking to they're saying good things like this guy Zachariah Owens right he um he's saying some really promising stuff you wouldn't really think we just came off a five win season necessarily and I think we have some good recruiters on staff like Alex Atkins, for example. Yeah, for sure. Well, cool. Um, well, follow Dane on Twitter, Dane underscore Draper. We've got a couple of articles coming out today um, with different interviews with different guys that uh, we've chatted with, some of the ones that we mentioned here today. Um, anything else before we kick you out of here, Dane? Do you have a season prediction or anything that you want to get off your chest this early? Do you have a spring game prediction that you'd like to get off your chest? Spring game prediction. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That's a tough one. So you're I'm going. Guess the yeah, thing. knock on wood that nobody gets hurt. All right, cool. Dane Draper, Dane underscore Draper on Twitter does a great job. Um, works his tail off. Oh wait, let's see if we have, we've got a couple comments here. Let's make sure that nobody's wanting to ask you a question here. I don't know. We're just ranting about Gene um, <laughs> Deckerhoff in the comments. Very good. All right, Dane. Thanks for hanging out for a few minutes. We'll talk to you soon. You guys give my man a follow. Thank you. Thanks, Dane. Thanks, Dane. Um, I mean, that's what it is at the end of the day. You just got to keep working, right? You just got to keep yeah. working. That's all That's all you can do, right? Last year, the end of last year's recruiting cycle sucked. I mean, there's just really no bones about that. Yeah. Um, but you, you live and learn, right? You hopefully move on. and yeah. <laughs> See. And, uh, don't, don't be as upset next year. Um, all right, spring scrimmage updates, Richie. We'll jump into it. Thoughts on the spring scrimmage? So, well, let's give us a little recap. We talked about this off air. I'll let you go. I feel like I've been talking the whole time with Dane and just kind of intro introing us in and stuff. But talk a little bit about the spring scrimmage, what the big takeaways were that you saw. Yeah, Florida State had their second scrimmage of the spring uh, um, yesterday on Saturday, uh, ahead of the Garnet and Gold game coming up next Saturday. Uh, sounds like the defense really won the day. Um, a lot of standouts, Fabian Lovett, Robert Cooper, Tatum Bethune. Kalen DeLoach, Jamie Robinson, Akeem Dent. Uh, but the one name that really stood out, it, which should make a lot of us excited, is Jared Verse. It, he apparently was dominant. Uh, we don't know who was held out, who was not held out, uh, et cetera, as far as the participation in the scrimmage. But Jared Verse really dominated. Um, and it sounds like the defense dominated. And uh, after the scrimmage, I, I thought it was, you know, it wasn't breaking news by any means, but the, the Mike Norvell, uh, Alex Atkins came out and said, yeah, no, Jordan Travis is a starter, guys. Like, we're happy with the progress we're seeing from A.J. Duffy and Tate Roadmaker, but Travis is our guy. 
But what are your thoughts, CJ, just on, on the defense kind of dominating the day from what it sounds like? Because I, I kind of like hearing that. No, I mean, I think that that's fairly normal. I don't think that that's a new thing at all. I, I really think that a lot of times the defense starts stronger. That's probably yeah. going to happen in the um, – in the fall as well, when we when we get to there, the defense always seems to start stronger. Um, everybody seems to get freaked out about it for some reason. <laughs> that the the oh man, our offense is terrible, but it just kind of seems to be what happens year after year after year is that defenses typically start stronger. A um, lot of in the defense, you can really kind of plug and play a lot of stuff. Where the offense is more about timing and routes and different things like that, and you've got different situations where certain offensive guys may not have played, may not have played the entire time. And so I don't think it's super, super shocking. I think it's a good thing in a year where, you know, our defense, we look at that Notre Dame game and obviously gave up what 41 points in that game. You look at some other games, you're like, man, the, the defense was not great uh, against Louisville against wake, but then they're towards the end of the year. I mean, defense was phenomenal against Miami um, what held them to 21, but seven of those came on a came on a tipped touchdown um, that should have been an interception, but or should have been an interception if not tipped. Um, so really, to like hold Miami to 14, it held NC State to 21 through uh, three quarters, and that's after giving up touchdowns on the first two drives, right? For Florida State to go down 14 yeah. nothing, and then held NC State the rest of the way, held Clemson down um, to only score what 20 points in the game. Uh, until the you know the last play fumble, which again that's on the defense held Florida down. What what Florida scored twenty four and so, yeah. seven of those came on a um, a thirty eight yard field because of the the muffed punt, you know. And so I, I thought the defense second half of the year was was pretty good and kept Florida State in a lot of games. You talk about Boston College and stuff, and then you you upgraded some of the talent. I mean, you lost Jermaine Johnson, which is huge in care. But then you upgraded some talent with bringing in Greedy Vance and you brought in Tatum Bethune and you, uh, again, I don't know that you're going to replace Jermaine Johnson, but you brought in Jared Verse to kind of lighten some of the blow of that load. Cooper and uh, Love it, and those guys are a year older, Briggs. And so I don't think it's super shocking. You know, and Josh talked about this on the spaces. You get to now move Deloach down to, you know, either 1B or linebacker 2 and you move – uh, that makes Lundy your third linebacker as opposed to your second. And you'd much rather have those guys, you know, where they are. And so, yeah, I think it's not super surprising. And it's probably a really good sign because the offense will click, right? Like the offense is going to run through Jordan. And if he's there, they're going to do fine. They've upgraded the offensive line. So I'm not super worried about that. But I I like it. Uh, good to hear Akeem, really good things out of Akeem Dent. Um, kind of the player of the, the day yesterday in the secondary and so, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, whatever. I, if the offense was blowing up the defense, I'm sure I'd be homerish and bullish on them too. But I think really good things with the defense being uh, uh, really good at this point, which is what you need, right? Like in the ACC, and that's the thing. I'll wrap up and let you go back here. In the <laughs> ACC, you know, I don't know that our defense is just going to shut down Clemson or just shut – I mean, they did this year – or shut down Miami, right? Miami's got a good offense. Uh, but – the defense should be able to shut down an NC State. The defense should be able to shut down a Wake Forest. The defense should be able to shut down a Syracuse and a Boston College and a Georgia Tech and teams like that. And so that is encouraging. You know, an LSU who wasn't very good last year. Defense plays lights out at the beginning. Yeah, I'm all about it. So I'm I'm with it. You know, you, you know a healthy offense is going to give you 24 to 28 points. So if the defense can kind of shut guys down on the other side of that, I'm all for it. What are your thoughts on the defense kind of being the dominant side now that I've talked about it for like 10 minutes? <laughs> yeah, and you kind <laughs> of hit on it. Up, Richie, I've been fired up all weekend, so you just got me fired up about this. <laughs> you, you, you kind of hit on it where th that's kind of expected. Like early in fall camp, right, the defense is going to be ahead of the offense. That's just typically how it works in, in football. Uh, so in spring, it should be no different. But I like what I'm hearing about Jared Verse. I like what I'm hearing about Tatum Bethune, uh, Akeem Dent. Um, you know, a guy we've all been waiting on to, to kind of have that light bulb come on for him. Maybe this is the spring that it's happening. Uh, I'm excited. I, I Like you mentioned, the defense finished the season pretty strong. Um, I think they have a chance to be really good. But like you said, there's no replacing a Jermaine Johnson or Keir Thomas, especially a Jermaine Johnson. But 
Uh, Jared Versa, from the reports we're seeing, three sacks yesterday, and he didn't play a whole lot. You got to like hearing stuff like that. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, there's been talk about how fast he is, how quick he's, you know, chasing down Travis. Obviously, Travis yeah. came on the came on the timeline and said he had a really good angle, and Brendan kind of confirmed that last week too. But uh, yeah, I mean, you you like hearing those things. You like hearing that the defense is really taking off because, like I said, in the ACC, my ex- I don't know what's your this is this is this is really early, right? We're we're two scrimmages yeah. in the spring. But my expectation is for us to compete for that second spot in the ACC in the in the in our division, right? I, I'm, I'll seed first place to Clemson, and I, and I don't think that we can't like upset them. But my expectation is for us to compete for that second spot. You know, if you lose to NC State, you're probably going to finish in third in the division. Yeah. Lose to Wake, you're probably going to finish in fourth. You know, it, it, down and down it goes. But my expectation is for us to be ahead of BC, to be ahead of Louisville, to be ahead of Wake. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Like, you know, and, and to me, if the defense steps up, then that's, we will do that. I think we have a better yeah. offense than those teams, you know, a couple of those teams and you, you can't finish behind BC. You can't finish behind Syracuse. You can't finish behind Louisville. You need to beat all three of those teams. And then you need to beat the teams ahead of you as well. Yeah. Obviously, you know, the short-term goal right now for Mike Norvell in Florida state is to catch Clemson, but you can't catch Clemson until you catch the other schools, the NC state's Lake forest, the Syracuse Boston colleges. I, I do think that should be the case this year. You know, with Mike Norvell heading into his third year, I, I think we're running out of excuses, right? I, I'm done making them. And I do think this team has a chance to live up to what the expectation should be, which, you know, to me, eight wins. And like you said, if, if you don't win the Atlantic, that's no big deal. I feel like if we were in the Coastal, you could have a realistic shot of playing for an ACC championship this year. Unfortunately, you still have Clemson in your division. And uh, despite what happened last year, that roster is loaded. They got another five-star freshman quarterback coming in. They're, they're going to be good. You can't expect to catch Clemson, but I agree. you got to catch the rest of the Atlantic this year. And I think they will, and they should. Jordan Travis has to stay healthy, obviously, but if things work out the way we hope it and kind of project right now, I, I do think second place in the Atlantic is a very reasonable expectation for this year. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that that's – I don't think that's absurd. I don't think that's insane. No. Now, if you come out and lose to Louisville in week three or, you know, yeah, that is week three by that time. It's, it's a big game. Three. Yeah. Yeah. If you lose to them, you're probably not going to finish second in the division, no. right? Like you could get hot, and, but that's a litmus test game, right? I, I think that, you know, if you beat LSU, which I think Florida State would be a slight underdog, somewhere between four and a half, six points um, would kind of be my See, guess. I think I we think... might be favored in that game. Oh, see, I don't. I don't know. I think that I, it being, I really do. I think that it being a de facto, win, but <laughs> I mean, I think it's a coin toss on win or loss. Yeah. I think it being a de facto home game for LSU, yeah. I think they'll they'll have them favored. So, um, if we were in Orlando this year, you think Florida State would be like maybe three points or two and a half favored? Yeah. No, I think if it was in Orlando, we'd be like a point and a half dog. Would be my guess. Okay. So almost a coin flip, but that's kind of where I, I kind of think, so I think the national perception is that a mediocre S and and maybe this is even the truth, but I think the national perception is that a mediocre SEC team trumps a mediocre ACC team, which in, for all purposes, it probably does, right? Like that's, so that's kind of where I think Vegas would have that line. Have it open up as like, ah, if this has got to go either way, we'll, we'll take the SEC team by like a point or two. Um, that's fair. People may not want to hear that, but that is fair. Yeah. I mean, you know, now I think an eight and four, like I think Wake Forest would have beat LSU last year. And I don't yeah. think that's crazy. Uh, NC State would have beat LSU last year. Obviously, Clemson would have. So, yeah, I think the upper tier ACC teams would be fine. I mean, I think even Miami would have given LSU some trouble last year. I think we'd have been, yeah. I mean, so anyway. Um, so, yeah, so pretty good news coming out of the spring. Um, looking forward to the spring game this weekend. Again, glorified practice, probably less of a scrimmage than even the the actual scrimmages are. Um, I expect them to be pretty situational. Is there anything specifically that you're kind of looking for um, out of the spring game this weekend outside of everybody yeah. just staying healthy? No, I I, I want to see how Tate Rotomaker looks because you know it, it's not <laughs> just a hype. It, it started a, as 
in my opinion, just as a fan outside looking in, as one outlet kind of pumping it up, and, and it seemed to kind of spread to where the, the consensus is that Tate has had a really good spring. Will it click in the spring game? And then obviously I want to see Johnny Wilson, Micah Pittman, um, you know, do span to some ex- extent, but really uh, Pittman and, and Wilson. Uh, yeah, for me, it's the the battle behind Jordan Travis. I, I'm excited to see A.J. Duffy. I, I love that pass he threw that got leaked on social media that Micah Pittman's girlfriend posted on their YouTube page where he's, you know, rolling to his left and just drops a dime. Uh, I forget who caught the ball, but yeah, I'm, the receivers, especially the transfers and the backup quarterback. And then of course, obviously Jared verse, right? We're, he, we're hearing what we want to hear. I want to see it. So I'm excited. How about you, man? Yeah. I want to see Trey Benson. I'm really excited. Yeah, I, you know, one. I, I feel good like one. it's always offense in the spring game is what you're excited to see because defense not that they're not playing but you know you don't want to get anybody hurt i don't know that jermaine johnson's i'm sorry jared verse how many times will i make that mistake this year <laughs> um but i think uh you know if you know jared verse isn't gonna come off the edge and just absolutely lay out a quarterback like we want to see him do you know in <laughs> right. baton rouge or in new orleans so uh defense is kind of a little bit tough i i do kind of, i mean i'm excited to see the defense but i do want to see trey benson a ton i want to see yeah. what he can bring and what he can do and I think that'll be a lot of fun. You mentioned the wide receivers. That's definitely a big one for sure. How about CJ so, Campbell, who seems to be, his name's been blowing up lately in the, in the backfield. That, is that yeah. run is is that backfield going to be legit? That that's something to look at. You mentioned Benson, but yeah, all of those dudes. Well, like Brendan mentioned last year, it's just so nice to have so many different options that you can just kind of like cycle through them in case that there's a, you know, in case you do need, you know, kind of a uh, somebody to take the load off or somebody's having a rough game or somebody puts the ball on the ground once or twice or something like that. So, yeah, I mean, just the diversity that's back there and being able to like change the pace and go with different dudes, I mean, is going to be a huge benefit. I don't know that you're going to have your um, Corbin type guy that takes all the carries again next year, but I think that diversity is really exciting. And if Benson's the real deal, which it sounds like he is uh, or has been kind of that number one guy or one a to, Wards 1B. I'm, I'm excited to see it. I even saw somebody post something about 247 posted, which their national guys suck. Like, no offense, but they're national guys that are doing these graphics and stuff. No, I'll put Brennan in that. <laughs> but uh, Snow does a great job. But they're national guys that do these graphics, like, you know, their breakout player. They had it as Toa Philly, which I'm not saying that Toa Philly can't break out. Like, this is not a shot at that game. Yeah. But like, by all accounts, he's been like the third running back in the rotation, like all spring, and they've got him as like the breakout guy. I'm just like, you guys just make stuff up. Like, why can you guys just not be normal for once? <laughs> exactly. But I mean, just say Benson or a wide receiver or something. It's, I'm shocked they didn't have Winston right on there. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I, I'm excited to see Benson. I'm excited to see Tate, kind of what that looks like. I'm excited to see Duffy, you know, like see how much yeah. burn he gets and, you know, what he kind of does in live action. And I think it'll be fun. But spring game is a great time. Like I said, doing a big tailgate. If you're just tuning in, DM me for details. Uh, again, if you go to roll up, uh, the roll ups Patreon, our you know, podcast is powered by the roll up network, patreon.com slash roll up network. As a Patreon, you get in the pot into the tailgate for free. Otherwise, it's fifty dollars for tickets. Don't spend fifty dollars, just go sign up to be a Patreon and get in. Again, if you hate the content, you can cancel next month or whatever. But sign up for cheap, get in, all you can eat, all you can drink. Thanks to Guthrie's and some other people that we'll announce later. Um, before the spring game tailgate. We've got something. I don't want to announce it just yet. I'll, I'll put out a quick video tomorrow for it, mm-hmm. but we're doing something fun with Garnet and Gold this weekend. I don't want to say just yet. I don't have an edit. I don't want to announce it here and not on Twitter. Working on getting an edit. Um, we're doing something fun with Garnet and Gold this weekend. If you don't have your spring game gear yet, you need to order from Garnet and Gold. Whether you're going to the spring game or not, you need to order from Garnet and Gold. Go to GarnetandGold.com. Somebody was mentioning they liked my hat. Oh, Ashley in the top of the chat. They've got hats similar to this. This state of Florida logo is my favorite logo. Like this is, to me, this is the coolest logo. Second is the FSU, the interlocking old school vault type logo. I like the new one too that the baseball team wears quite often, but I love the old school kind of block letter FSU that's interlocking. It's on my rocks class that I drink my bourbon in. Um, Really, really cool. You can get 20% off of all of that stuff. With code no slaw N O S L A W. You don't even have to be a fan of ours, but you can literally. I'll save you twenty percent on Garnet and Gold by entering code no slaw at checkout. You can hate us. You can hate the podcast. 
but I'll at least save you money. They don't, they're not going to call and tell me that you bought from it. Go to gardengold.com, shop with the uh, Florida State supported business. Don't give your money to fanatics, don't give your money to anybody else. Shop with gardengold.com, use code no slaw and get your spring game stuff. Um, they have an NIL thing going on on Friday afternoon. And then we've got something going with Garden Gold on Saturday morning. I don't want to say exactly what just yet, but stay tuned for that announcement coming in the next couple of days. Whew, I'm out of breath. That's all I got on football. You got anything else before we move on to uh, European football? Yeah, I, th I think that covers it. Uh, I'm excited for the spring game because I think next Sunday we'll have a, a good bit to talk about because we'll all get to see it firsthand and see what this really does look like. For sure, for sure. Okay. From one field to another, we had some big news this weekend um, or this week. Coach Gregorian, um, FSU's soccer coach for the last 17 years and Double Fries No Slaw alum, um, stepped away from the soccer program, released a statement to a few media members, and didn't go through normal uh, kind of FSU protocol slash channels for a massive <laughs> announcement like this. Um which was a little weird, but also eh, a little quirky guy. Like, who knows? You know, like, and then it's as time went, you know, more and more has been speculated. A lot of the girls on uh, his team, almost all of them really on Instagram, posted statements in support of Coach Krikorian, voicing some displeasure with the circumstances that have remained unsaid. Um, that they were, you know, frustrated with the circumstances that led to him stepping away. It has not been officially reported what was the cause of him leaving, though you can kind of read between the lines on a lot of things and understand that it was not quite an amicable amicable breakup. Um, a lot of outrage from folks thinking that Florida State did something wrong here. Um, Richie, I don't know if you want me to go first on this or if you want to go first here or, or what your thoughts are or what you want to say about it, but – I guess before we get into it, before we get into the conversation, it sucks overall. I'll just say that Coach Gregorian was an absolute legend. Um, I'm going to preface this statement by saying this place, we're not doing this podcast without Bobby Bowden. So like all due respect to Bobby Bowden as being the absolute legend that he is and was and will always be because again, I'm not wearing this cool looking hat. We're not doing this podcast. We're not sitting around on a Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Without Bobby. So, all due respect to Bobby, but Mark Krikorian might be the greatest coach that ever coached at, at Florida State. Like, he really was that elite, right? And I understand I that Bobby's different for what he built, but Mark Krikorian was absurdly good and absurdly talented and built an absurd dynasty and then went out at the absolute peak of it. And so, it sucks because you, you don't like to lose legends. Um and so I just want to say I appreciate everything that Coach Recorian did for Florida State, for obviously the women's soccer program, for women's athletics in general, um, for the girls that we've even started to develop relationships with. I talked with one on Thursday or Friday morning, and um, you know they're heartbroken and sad and upset, and don't blame them at all. I mean that they they committed to to Florida State to play for him, and they're not going to do that anymore. So. Um, but it sucks for sure. But before we get kind of get into the conversation, you know, hats off to Mark Corian for 17 amazing years at Florida state, because we we're, we're super appreciative of, of his time here for sure. Yeah. And, and uh, I don't think that was any slight towards coach Bowden, because the fact is coach Corian is the most accomplished coach in the history of Florida state athletics. It, men, women's doesn't matter. Uh, I don't think it's close. I think he went to what 11 college cups, the equivalent of 11 final fours in 17 years. Um, in, Again, he turned Florida State into the preeminent soccer program in what was already widely considered the best conference for women's soccer in the country. You know, it, you think about Virginia, Duke, Carolina. No, Florida State came out of nowhere and, and surpassed all of those schools to where when you think about the ACC, you think Florida State if you're talking women's soccer. Um, and yeah, it, it sounds like in like you said, we can read between the lines uh, between the resignation coming from uh, his own personal email account as opposed to something through the school, which you traditionally see, like we saw with Coach Sue. I, it seems to me like Florida State saying, hey, we're going to push all of our funds to football 
And unfortunately, other very, very, very successful programs may have to suffer. And I think that's what we saw here. And Coach Corey, and we had him on the podcast. He's a no BS guy, man. He he is all like direct, very forward. He'll tell you what he thinks. Um, he told us they were going to be good. They won a national title. Uh, but he probably didn't like what he heard from the administration. Again, I don't have any inside info or anything, but just reading between the lines, it's pretty obvious. Yeah. And I'll, I, again, I don't want to, uh, I don't argue. The one thing I'll correct in what you're saying is Florida state is not pushing all of the funds towards football. There are still a lot of, a lot of funds going towards soccer um, and women's athletics and all things in general. Um, well, real quick, but, I think it was that he, he is the highest paid coach, but I think yeah. it's the money for the program that he was looking for. Right. You, I'm just kind of correcting the – you said like yeah. all funds towards football. No, no I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Soccer no, we're still, not going all in on Clemson. Yeah. The, just throwing yeah, everything like, at football. <laughs> yeah. Florida State's soccer program is still getting a new video scoreboard this summer. Um, not only was Coach Recorian already the highest paid coach in college soccer, I, I've been told that he was given an offer to even increase that. Um to again continue him being the highest paid coach in soccer in women's soccer and so there are also upgrades to their facilities and locker rooms at the end of the day i don't think anybody did anything wrong here and i tweeted this the other day i think that it's a coach's job to fight for what's best for his specific program and it's an administration or the ad's job to fight for what they think is best for the entire department, the, the entire athletic department. And if those two things, if those two sides differ on their vision, then that can be a tough spot for both sides to be in. And it doesn't necessarily mean that one side was wrong or one side was right. It's just that they couldn't come to an agreement. And yeah. it looks like things didn't end very happily. It looks like things ended pretty poorly and that stinks because you know you you don't like that to happen ever with uh with um you know let or you don't like that to happen with anybody whether they're a legend or not like Coach Krukorian was so it stinks um but it brings us to a situation where it does look like Richie said like some more chips may kind of fall to where we're going in pretty heavily on football um. And we'll see where that takes us. You know, if football gets back and everyone can then eat because football's back, then it will have been the right choice. If football doesn't get back and we also ruined all the other programs too, <laughs> which I'm not saying what? that everything, I'm not saying that everything else is about the stink or anything like that. Uh, but it's kind of a, well, proof will be in the pudding as to what happens. I will say this. Uh, and I tweeted about this on Friday. And I was pretty heated about this while I was tweeting about it on Friday. But a lot of people threatened to cancel their booster donations. They threatened to, to do this, to do that. You know, oh, I, I can't support this. I can't support that. You can, at this very moment, go to boosters.fsu.edu and sign up for different coaches clubs to where you can dire donate directly to whatever program you want. Every single program at FSU in the athletic department is represented there. And if you don't trust leadership to appropriate the funds from the general donations the way you want them, you can donate to a specific coaches club. Richie, I'm about to call, so go ahead for a minute. <laughs> yeah, and, and the cool thing about those coaches clubs, I will say, and I'm not a member of any, but I probably will join the basketball team, uh, their coaches club here in the next year. You get some nice bonuses that nobody gets. Like if you join the golf coaches club, you're going to get a Nike FSU golf polo that you cannot go to, you know, Dick Sporting Goods or, or in some cases, even Garnet and Golden buy. It's exclusive stuff. Um, definitely worth it. But and you also mentioned, TJ, I think you referenced Virginia Tech had 25,000 boosters. Florida State had less than half of that uh, to close out last year. Yeah. There's no excuse for that, guys. We all love this program. We all want to complain and, and you know get upset when things aren't going right. But if we're not putting our money uh, where our mouth is, then you know what can we really expect? You, you get what you pay for. It. And as a fan base, we're not paying for premium right now. We're just not. Yeah. At the end of the day, like you said, Virginia Tech has twenty five thousand um, boosters. Florida State right now doesn't have nine thousand. Now finished the year last year at twelve. So do expect with renewals and stuff that yeah. we'll get back up close to that, but that's not even half. 
right? And that's embarrassing. We have the loudest fan base that cries about refs and cries about announcers and cries about fan support and cries about this, that, and the other. And we can't, we don't even have half the boosters that Virginia Tech does. Florida State has the largest alumni base in the conference, larger than Syracuse, larger than North Carolina, larger than Clemson, larger than Virginia Tech, larger than Miami. We graduate folks at a two times rate of most of those colleges. I looked up Syracuse yesterday. We have twice the amount of enrolled students that Syracuse does. And so not only do we have the largest alumni base out of all of those colleges, our alumni base is continuing to grow faster than theirs are. And so it's frustrating to see people complain about, oh, well, I won't support this or I won't do this or this, that, and the other. Um, I, you know, if if you're listening to this and you're a Florida state supporter and you're not a booster, I don't complain on my timeline because I'll meet you so fast. It's not even funny. (laughs) So anyway, I got heated about that on Friday, but I, I do think it's true. I think that that's, it's really important that folks do support. If, if you're getting the entertainment that, uh, Florida state athletics provides and you consider yourself a passionate fan, you should be. Uh, supporting as such. Uh, I know that all of our listeners support. And so like, I know that's not to anybody here, but that's just to other people who may not be listening. Um, The last thing I'll say is if you haven't renewed your season tickets yet for football, do that before you go to the spring game this weekend. Let's get that done by the deadline, which is the 15th, um, just about a week and a half away from now. Um, That's all I had on Coach Gregorian. It sucks, but... At the end of the day, yeah. kind of is what it is. The other side of that, some good news. Coach Wyckoff introduced on Wednesday. It was suspected that she would take over for Coach Sue. Um, her press conference was phenomenal. I teared up like seven times just watching her and watching uh, her daughter Avery and just different things. So really, really cool to see that moment for her. Uh, Seminole for the last 26 years, I think she said, 25, 26 years. Yeah. And so really, really cool to see – truly one of our own honor the way that she was. And so, you know, you guys know this, but massive Brooke Wyckoff fans, super excited for her and uh, excited to see what that program can do in kind of a new era. That program has been fantastic for years and years and years. I think they're one of only like eight programs to make the tournament the last, what, nine, 10, 11 years, something like that. And so uh, excited to see what she can do going forward uh did you catch any of coach wyckoff's press conference i did i i thought it was really good i you know you mentioned you teared up she was tearing up it seemed like the whole thing um but i thought it was really cool seeing coach norvell there seeing coach hamilton there just all the other coaches that went to support her um you know she put me to shame you know my, my mom was born in puerto rico i'm half puerto rican and she speak spoke flawless spanish to her husband uh who is hispanic as well and i'm like man i can't even speak that that well uh but just really cool stuff and obviously a huge fan of coach brooke she's been on our pod multiple times uh i ran into her with the my wife Lindsay at the notre dame game ran into her and coach sue got a picture with them so yeah just i'm super excited about the her taking uh Florida State women's basketball to the next era. Yeah, for sure. Um, Okay, cool. Um, I've got it around the horn. Then we've got, you know, if you want to do Buck stuff here, we can. If you want to do Beatrice, we can. Masters coming up. We already talked about the Final Four. Um, A quick around the horn. I want to start out with women's tennis. Uh, We, You know, we've had Jen on several times. Yeah. For those of you that don't know, but uh, for some reason, God gave me this platform, and so you're going to hear about it from me. But women's tennis had a match on Saturday, and I know that this is not necessarily maybe what you tuned in for, but again, bear with me for a minute and a half here. They had a match on Saturday where they lost the doubles point against the 48th-ranked team in the country. Women's tennis has been absolutely plagued with injuries this year. They have really struggled to even get full lineups out there. The way tennis works is if you don't have somebody for a certain spot, you just automatically lose that point. There have been matches where Florida State has literally started down 3 nothing due to not being able to have enough people out there. You play to four, right? So the only way they could literally win is for everybody that was there to, to win all their points. And so they have struggled with injuries. And, you know, Tallahassee Medical Re- Regional Medical like posted a story the other day. They had a girl had a blood clot. Um in her leg and was up in her lungs. And so, you know, literally just the fact that she's alive is a massive win for 
the the team and and she's not been able to play and so they've been playing injured and playing her all year um they had their almost their full complement of of players there on Saturday lost the doubles point and then did not lose a set past that which is pretty remarkable after Boston College literally just beat you on two out of three sets um for you to uh not lose a set in singles uh just a phenomenal collective group effort for them to come back the way they did and end up winning four to one um Really, really special. I, I texted Coach Hyde afterwards, and we chatted for a little while. Um, but certainly, certainly happy for them to pick up a big win. Again, Florida State is ranked 40th right now. Boston College was 48th. So we're talking about two evenly matched teams. You're, you're not talking yeah. about a team that, you know, oh, is ranked in the hundreds or unranked or anything like that. So shout out to Florida State's women's tennis team. Uh, the men's tennis team, I'll go right from there to this one. Um, they – had a similar result. They lost the doubles point and then won the next four points against the Boston college team. That isn't quite as good as the uh, team that the women faced, which is too lame, but um, good stuff for them winning as well. Softball swept. Michaela Edenfield had three home runs in the first 24 hours of this series over the first two games. And then she had an RBI double today as well. So shout out to her baseball struggling. They lost the first two to Notre Dame. They're losing right now in the sixth as, in the seventh as well. No, in the sixth, <coughs> but uh, hopefully they can come back and get a win there. Swimming and track competed this weekend. Beach volleyball went three and one with two ranked wins on the weekend. So a good weekend for Florida State Athletics overall. Golf competed against NC State today. And then, Richie, you watched Beatrice yesterday finish top 10 at a uh, Augusta National Women's Amateur. What did you think about that? Yeah, Beatrice Walleen, I, I, she was phenomenal. So that was, it was her third start at Augusta at the Augusta National Women's Amateur event. And she finished in the top 10, just like she did the previous two events. Um, she had an awesome, uh, massive FSU polo shirt on with a huge similar head logo on the back to where anybody who was watching on TV, you know, I, I had friends who, you know, are, are golf fans, but would never watch women's golf that were tuned in to watch it and, and commenting on her polo, which I thought was awesome. Uh, even coach, uh, coach bond, a friend of the podcast who was here a few weeks ago, commented on one of my tweets. So Beatrice, a huge, uh, kudos to her for, you know, her performance out there again. Uh, what's wild to me, it, um, my goodness, a 16 year old high school sophomore won the event. Did, did you, uh, did you know that TJ or uh, Anna Davis? She's, she's just turned 16 high school sophomore beat all of these best college golfers that, in the United States. I saw it on Twitter. Again, we were out of the pool like all weekend, no. so I didn't actually see it, but I did see it on Twitter later. That's pretty impressive. That's pretty absurd. Yeah. So hats off to her for sure. Yeah. But then the uh, sticking with the Augusta theme, we got Brooks Kepka and Daniel Berger both teeing it up next week at Augusta National. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more next week on Sunday if they're in the hunt, because then we'll, it'll be a Sunday preview show essentially. Um, and then Tiger might play. I'm excited. TJ, are you excited if Tiger plays or not? Because I, I know I'm like on the edge of my seat waiting for this announcement. I'm trying to be less excited, right? Because I, I'm not counting Tiger out, but I also don't want to get my emotions so, so high and then him like not make the cut or something this weekend. So, no, but I I mean, how can you not be excited if Tiger does get back and get in there and mix it up? 13 and, months after that accident. Yeah, if he can get his – if we can get to see a red polo, man, I'd be I'd be thrilled yeah, on let's Sunday. Go. So, um, what I really like is like if he was to play. Okay, would this be a sign of respect? You feel like, or do you think he like take it the wrong? Like, I think what they should do is if he plays but like doesn't make the cut, I think everyone should wear a red polo on Sunday. Like, I think every I every think golfer out there. That. No, I, I feel like it's that. a sign of respect. No, or is that like not a sign of respect? No, because no, the guy's not dead. You know what I mean? Like it's, yeah, his career might be. <laughs> no, I, I, I think St. Andrews. Right, when he dies, we'll in, do it. When competing. he dies, we'll do it. When he dies, I'm going to contact everybody on the tour. Right, I'm in. I'll wear a red polo to work the next day. <laughs> Me too. I'll wear a red polo the whole week at, at my office at home. Um, <laughs> so, all right, cool. Well, if you missed any of this, if you tuned in late, we, we it's recorded. You can obviously catch it on iTunes. You can check it uh, here on any of the streaming services, whether you're watching on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube. Um, again, shout out Garden and Gold. Use code no slaw. Stay tuned for an, an announcement that we have coming up with them for this weekend. 
We'll see you out of the spring game. If you want to come tailgate with us, shoot me a DM, shoot the podcast a DM. We'll get you all hooked up with our tailgate and we will go from there. Richie, you got any shout outs before we get out of here with Brooks and uh, Daniel, your shout outs. Yeah. Shout out Brooks, Daniel and Tiger. I'm excited for Augusta, man. I, I, and shout out the wife. Uh, we'll have five years of marriage on Friday, which I don't know how she managed that, but I'm excited about it. I don't know how she put up with that either, bro. <laughs> just to be honest with you. So, I, I get it. I get um, it. <laughs> oh, Kara's birthday was yesterday. Shout out. I guess I should shout out my wife. If you shout out your Kara's <laughs> birthday was yesterday. We went to the, we hung out at, uh, Cabana Bay all weekend, ton of fun chasing the kids around and going to the pool and stuff like that. So a lot of fun over in Orlando. Um, we will be back. We actually might have a pop-up episode this week. FSU reached out about an interview. Might uh, might kind of complete a, uh, a milestone goal for us. So we'll see if we get an interview in or not this week. If not, we'll be back on Sunday to talk about the spring game, the Masters, and whoever wins this national championship. I got Kansas tomorrow, by the way. Rock Chalk. Yeah, I UNC so. did the UNC did their job last night, but let's go. Yeah, Kansas. they did what they had to. I, I, Kansas is just too good. Like they're just yeah. so good. <laughs> I think yeah. Kansas Duke would have actually been a really good game, just for what it's worth. I think that game yeah. would have been better than. I I actually don't know if this game's going to be great, but we'll see. I have um, Kansas by eleven. So I can see that. I can see that. So eighty-one seventy. There you go. Official. <sighs> boom. Book it. Ooh, I hope you're wrong because that sounds terrible. But, um. <laughs> I won't. All right, cool. Watch it. Who are we kidding? Yeah, that's true. All right, we will see you guys. Yeah, I'm staying up for this. The national championship. Get the hell out of here. All right, Richie. We'll see you guys, if not next Sunday, sometime earlier this week. Until then, go Knowles.